Hello, Executive Talk fans. This is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome you guys back to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are listening on podcasts, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, Twitter, thank you guys for joining us. With me, as always, I have Doug Carpenter, owner and operator of Comprehensive uh, Hospitality Solutions. How are you doing today, Doug? Good, good. I'd like to thank our audience for joining us. Yeah, there we go. How, how's, uh, how are we coming into the second part of the, the season right now? Uh, we're finding that uh, there's opportunities and challenges, like always. Um, every year is a little bit unique. People you know, say it's the same thing as always, but it's always just a little bit different. Sure. And just to shape one of those opportunities and also challenges is inflation. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Inflation is always obviously a huge thing. And over the last couple of years here, Doug, what have you seen and how have you seen business owners respond to this time frame? This has been a very uh, you know relevant topic and a topic of conversation we've had with a lot of our clients. And it's really gone from a point where it was something that didn't necessarily have to be watched that closely to something that has to be monitored on a regular basis. Um, when you have inflation of one or two percent, it's not a big factor. It's something we look at. We look at profitability. And usually when there were changes in profitability, it was due to factors within the business, something the business was doing differently or, you know, they were ordering different or they had a new manager who wasn't uh, prop, you know, wasn't net, net necessarily trained to purchase the right things. Today, sure. though, it's driven from external factors. So the changes in profitability were often internal factors. Now they're external. OK. All right. Well, in, in between our show here, Doug, I did a little bit of research because I wanted to really uh, hone in on what's being said out said out there regarding inflation, because obviously there's going to be a lot of thought processes that point towards this because everybody wants to know why. So I want to go ahead and share a couple of articles for our, for you to discuss and for our studio audience here is, um, and we're going to start off with the why factor. Uh, we have this article here and just to address it, we're going to make it a little cleaner for you. This is here from the, um, let me see from Peterson Institute for internal or international economics. And it says the pandemic inflation, that's what it's referring to in this, in this article. And it says three forces push inflation to a 40 year high in 2021. First, a series of fiscal support packages enable consumer spending to exceed this pre pandemic trend. Second, uh, many workers were either afraid to return to work or unable to do so because school or work closures forced them to stay at home. And third, uh, spending shifted from in-person uh, services to, to goods, uh, exceeding the production capacity of good sectors. So now, obviously, that's a that's a that's quite a quite a few thoughts there. And everybody has been through the pandemic, and they they've seen a lot of this. And you know, even like going back to work, that's been a whole new situation, a big change that people have really never thought that was going to be issued. They thought, you know, hey, as soon as we have the opportunity to go back, people just kind of jump back in. But we're we're seeing a whole different change. But go ahead and see how how, how do you how do you address that article and what they're there saying? Are, there are a lot of factors that go into inflation. I don't think a single article can really grab all of the different factors that are driving it. Uh, pandemic has definitely been part of the part of the situation. I'm not sure it's the only driver. Uh, it's certainly not the only driver. There's other things that that do, but more important perhaps than then the fact that it, it has been what caused the drivers, the drivers themselves are what you have to look at. So it's energy costs, it's supply chain, it's demand, um, it's workers. These are the different factors that are all combining in inflation. Now, why is it important for a business to understand the why? We all know prices are going up and how much and quantified, and that's probably the more important, but one of the important things is why, because that will help to tell you how long it's going to last, how severe it's going to get. Sure. Okay. Um, and with that factor, and we talk about how severe it's going to get, I feel like there is a little historical component because obviously for now, there's some business owners that are just now coming into business that are just hit, you know, they open their business owner right into inflation. There's some business owners that have had their business for a while. So they've been able to ebb and flow for quite some time. And so it hits them, but they, they're able to do things, respond differently. But I feel like there's more of a historical component to inflation and some other factors that, um, as you're alluding to, that move this. So I want to go ahead and share this, uh, share another article that I read. 
and have you talk about this here. So we were looking at, and for us, it's just from 2012. Okay. So from 2012, what we've seen is uh, inflation used to be at 1.7% and then at, up until about 2019, 2.3%. So that's, that, that's somewhere where we, it looks like we kind of level off, but then the, what everybody is feeling is what all these articles are coming to is that in tw- uh, 2021, it shot up to 7%. Now in 2022, we're, you know, at 8.3. So that's about as relative as background as a lot of us can remember. But you've been studying this for quite some time and you've been through a couple of changes. So talk to us about that. You could drag that timeline back up to 30 years. And what you're going to see is sort of a fishbowl type of look uh, or a bowl type of look where you have um, low inflation for a very long period of time. We probably have a generation and a half that has not really experienced inflation. Whereas in the late 1970s, you had very high inflation. And it was the last time people saw these kind of price increases. So this is new to a large population of people that have not seen this before. They knew it could happen, but they actually haven't experienced it. And what you see both is higher prices, but an erosion of wealth um, and and an erosion in purchasing power. Gotcha. So you're saying this is actually a this is a good thing right now because as a new millennial, if I'm a new millennial, right. And I have this, this thought process of things should be a certain way. And I hit this, I don't see it as everything is, you know, any kind of positive light. (laughs) I, I, this is not a good thing. Um, This is something, unless you consider having experienced all different possibilities to be a good thing, then, then you're getting to experience inflation. Um, The, the, The real point of this is how you deal with inflation once you're experiencing it. And the first part of this series is to understand, you know, what what the driving factors are, fuel prices and other things. And what we get is a spiral effect in inflation. And that is that one thing leads to another to another. It's a domino effect. So if the uh, raw material producer has higher costs, it's going to get passed to the person who buys that raw material. That's going to sure. get passed into the assembly line that produces the good. That's going to get onto the truck, which now has higher costs to transport it. All of those prices are going to get built in. It then hits the retail store and then the consumer. Gotcha. So all of those things are that domino effect that, that you see uh, in inflation. It spirals. Sure. And I think it's important. Um, because there's some indicators and I feel like this obviously within the, the graph that I showed everybody. And for those that are listening, it was a graph of the percentage of how inflation has increased. That is one factor, but you, you were telling me about how gas is a indicator. Everybody really complains, which is makes sense when gas prices go up. But is that, should that be our natural indicator as to how things are flowing? Gas is a great way to just get a real quick read on how things are going, but it's actually diesel fuel that to me is the better indicator. If you're looking at diesel, all the trucks run on diesel, trains run on diesel. Um, That's the driver of the economy. And when that goes up, it has the greatest effect. Long time ago, gas and diesel prices were almost in parity. Now diesel is much higher. Um, and it's continuing to be higher. I've seen six fifty, seven dollars a gallon for for that. That tells me that as time goes, that the diesel price I saw increase today, I will see two months from now in the consumer goods that I purchase, in the things that I'm buying. That's it right. will it will go down that line. But the dominoes I just explained, as those prices go up, it doesn't happen instantly. It happens instantly at the pump but it doesn't happen instantly in the goods that are serviced by that, which is everything. That's true. So with that, with that being said, that means that um, trans- transportation is, is affected. How is it? So are there some major supply chains out there that are, are really struggling right now or having to make some adjustments within their store? Cause I know there's also a lot of uh, consumers right now, and this is for the hospitality um, food chains. They're not getting their food the way that they used to. Is this part of the effect is because of inflation or is that a whole different thing? There's been some spot shortages, but it hasn't necessarily been catastrophic. Um, There's often substitution that's involved 
where one okay. thing has to be substituted for another. Um, so we haven't necessarily seen too much of, of supply chain affecting directly in that manner. But supply chain is affecting availability. Uh, if you want to buy a new car, I know someone that's looking uh, looking to buy a truck for their business. They, right. they There's a six-week wait, and that's the best they could do, and that was paying above sticker. So these are the type of things that you'll see a lot more of. We have a tendency to, if we want it, it's on the shelf. And we've lived in a, right. in a society that's always provided that. We may not see that right now. And it may not just be inflation. Or there's a lot of factors that, that go into that. There is a pandemic result of that. There's things that have happened in China that have uh, slowed the, the supply chain down. There's a worker shortage that also has affected things. We have businesses that can't open because they don't have workers. And that's that's why they either haven't had their grand opening yet. They just haven't been able to fill up or they've had to shut down because they haven't uh, had enough people that can come work for them. Sure. Are you noticing some major retailers? Is that their major adjustment that they're having to make based off of the inflation and the short shortage of workers? Are they very relevant the to the re, you know, to, to recent developments? You have Target and Walmart, which uh, just announced decreased in earnings. And it's because of higher higher costs, inflationary costs, worker worker. I'll call them worker issues, but what that means is worker shortages or not being able to get workers or having to pay workers more. Um, and also, uh, the transportation costs have gone up significantly. All of this has hit their bottom lines. And one of the things they've said is they weren't able to raise prices fast enough to meet this increased cost. That tells me now that prices are going to go up. They haven't been able to raise them fast enough, but they're going to. And that'll continue the inflation spiral. Okay. There's there's another article that I would like for you to help, us ex help explain. And there's a three different ex uh, inflation types that, that this article alludes to. So I'm gonna bring that up for everybody here. And we're gonna talk about deflation. And they say falling prices warned of deflation. Uh, this may seem like a great thing for shoppers, but deflation, often signals an impending recession. With a recession comes declining wages, job losses, and the big hits to most investment portfolios. Um, as the recession worsens, so does deflation. Business lowers their prices in desperate attempts to get consumers to buy their products and services. Uh, deflation is worse than inflation because it signals falling demand. So now, how do you how do you address that? Are we in that place where deflation is our issue? Are we coming into that? That's difficult to gauge. I would say there won't be deflation while there's still supply chain issues. If you can still demand higher prices for scarce goods, you will. It's when you have too many goods and not enough demand that you see deflation. One sure. of the things that we didn't mention at all yet in this conversation, and it does have a very big impact on inflation, is the money supply. There's been a lot of money pumped into the economy directly yes, to the consumer, right. much more so than in the past. We've had other QE, quantitative easing and other things. But a lot of that went to institutions to give loans and things to business. This yes, went right. directly to the consumer. So it okay. drove demand at a time when supply was becoming. So that, by definition, creates inflation. Now the Fed is turning around and starting to take money out of the system. Hmm. That is going to have the exact opposite effect of lowering consumer demand. So what you you might see is if you suddenly see supplies going up and consumer demand going down, then you will see a deflationary environment. Under the current exact conditions we have today, I don't see it. I don't see it occurring. All right, that's fair. Um, let me go ahead and bring this um, up, and it talks about healthy inflation, which. Um, what they're suggesting is moderate inflation of around 2% is actually good, good for ec economic growth. Uh, consumers are more likely to buy now rather than wait when expect when they expect prices to rise. This spurs demand, driving prices higher. Inflation is self-fulfilling prophecy. So how do you... How do you go let's about? let's talk about what healthy inflation really is an indicator of. A healthy okay. inflation is an indicator of a growing economy, that your economy is getting stronger, you're moving forward, and you need a little bit of inflation because there's a driving force pushing uh, demand up 
that causes a certain amount of inflation. The Fed target rate has always been between one and 2%. They consider that healthy. When it's higher than that, they want to get it under control. And in a deflationary environment, it's obviously the exact opposite that they do. Sure. You have what really is indi- what that's indicating is a recession and a, sh- and a shrinking economy. Got it. And we are here in the feds and, you know, the current president right now talking about addressing it and uh, trying to make some moves like that. So is that what the, is that potentially what the moves that they're trying to make? Well, the Fed is doing two things at the moment. One, it's raising interest rates. And the other thing it's going to be doing, it's starting with $45 billion, but it'll ultimately be going up to $95 billion a month will be taken out of the money supply. That's a lot of money when yeah. you when you start when you actually start to add it up. Uh, and so what's happening is they have to be careful. It's a very delicate balancing act is you're slowing down the economy. But if you slow it down too hard, you come down too fast. When you look at a change in interest rates, it has tremendous effect on the economy. Uh, yeah. Just look at it as it affects, say, home buying. Yes, so if exactly. you have less people buying homes because they can't afford mortgages because the difference between, say, a 3% mortgage rate and a 6% mortgage rate is a tremendous difference in your payment over 30 yes. years. So what happens is you have less people, say, buying houses, less people moving, less people redecorating, needing to hire movers, change, you know, fix the yard, do the other things that they're going to do. So there's a tremendous ripple effect that you see in when when you change interest rates just from, say, mortgages alone. Businesses, it's the same thing. And there's this ripple effect that that hits the economy. If again, at the same time, you're reducing the money supply, you're taking money out of the economy. Um, which I don't think is the wrong move, but you have to be careful how aggressively you do it and monitor the effect that it has on the economy as you go forward. Sure. When you monitor, do you give yourself around, what, six months to really gauge if it's uh, ta- how, how it's taking effect? As far as a time period, it's tough to gauge. Six months is probably too late to... Mm-hmm to you you want to you want to have a constant gauge it's something that you're you're going to monitor constantly obviously from like a fed policy standpoint you can't shift too in too often too infrequently you can't change direction that fast but you do want to have a, a pulse on it and they do they do watch these things constantly i think over i've always used quarter over quarter for for my own business evaluations i look at businesses we look at the previous quarter and we see what happened what changed? Have your prices gone up? What have you done to to counteract that? And and what what might you need to do to respond to the changing circumstances? OK, that's fair. Well, let's get into uh, this last uh, inflation type and call it hyperinflation. So um, people sometimes worry that inflation will skyrocket, causing hyperinflation. Um, they're concerned that the prices increase could be like those seen during uh Wimmer uh, Republic in Germany, hyperinflation is very rare because it means that prices are rising by 50% per month, which sounds exorbitant. Uh, it is. I don't see us in a hyperinflationary environment. I, I don't see it. There's there's also too many controls by the Fed. You, have, you see hyperinflation in countries like Venezuela. They don't have the same okay. monetary controls, monetary strength. Um, that this country has. Also, with the dollar being the reserve currency of the world, it uh, carries a certain, uh, so much influence that there's a lot of things you can do to stave off a hyperinflationary environment. I don't think that's necessarily a, a concern. But the problem is over time, inflation has two factors. One is the amount of inflation you have at any given point in time. And inflation also is the length of time that it exists for. If we see inflation, so you could have very rapidly rising prices, but you also what you don't want to see is inflation carrying on for a very long period of time. Right. It's six months, a year. That could be some time. But if you have inflation going on for four or five years, people who are, say, retired and on fixed incomes, have savings for their entire lives, are going to see that reduced year over year over year substantially. Yes. An 8% inflation rate means that $100 in your pocket last year has $92 worth of purchasing power this year. Okay. All right. And now let's, let's, let's build on that. And let's take two different scenarios. Okay. And we talked about this earlier where we got your, your new business owner that is going to make an adjustment. 
but they don't know what to make. They don't know what adjustment to make, but you get your older business owner or seasoned, I should say, <laughs> who sure. um, potentially will make a quicker, quicker adjustment. Um, typically that goes in the framework of raising prices, but talk to me about both scenarios. So if I'm a new business owner, let's start there and I'm hitting this period and my product is not really branded well, or I don't, I'm not really known with me coming into the marketplace, increasing prices, is that a smart move? It's a very interesting concept. And that is, I think you're absolutely right. I've seen the more seasoned business executive where I'll have this conversation at the end of the quarter and they've already raised their prices. They've already responded to it before I've asked the question. Whereas the newer business people will ask me what, what they should be doing and, and seek some guidance. I think the big difference comes down to understanding your customer. Somebody that's been in the business for a long time will have a good pulse on where their customer is and what they can do and accept. And they're more readily um, confident in being able to raise their prices and understand that acceptance. They have relationships with their customers, they're long term, and they are able to do this and understand what their customer will accept. A new sure. business might be struggling with just gaining new customers to begin with. And then suddenly to raise prices, you may not, you may have the exact opposite effect where you're losing more business than, than you're retaining sure. and able to, to account for the price increases. So it's difficult for a new business owner to gauge that, whereas somebody with a lot of experience, and it's usually because they understand their customers better and they understand the marketplace, uh, will have an easier time of making decisions like that. Got it. So in the marketplace here, Doug, I'm a consumer now. So we have the small business owner and then we have the seasoned business owner. Now we have the consumer, which still um, needs their products, needs their services. Are they taking offense to some of these uh, newer price hikes? The If there's one good piece of news for a business owner about inflation, the only thing I could give you about it is that customer acceptance is there for price increases. When you walk okay. into the supermarket today, you expect to pay more. If you suddenly see something's gone up in price, you kind of know that. It, it's not going to shock you that coffee's more or whatever it is that you've decided to buy is going to be more. People still have needs. Uh, every brand is going up. Everybody's doing it. It's not like you can really switch from one to another and do something differently. You're going to go to the gas station and fill your car. I don't think you're going to go back home and not drive because the price of gas went up. You might right. do it for the vacation, but if you got to get to work, you have to get to work. That's right. There are there's elastic and inelastic products, uh, ones that that have uh, that will allow a consumer that will take consumer acceptance. Consumers have to pay for food. They have to pay for, for energy. They have to pay their electric bill. These are these are must haves. And there's a ready acceptance of whatever the price is. It's the ones that have a more of a uh, more of a something that they don't have to have, something that is less needed, that is is the ones that have to be more okay. sensitive to the price increases that, um, that are. So th if it's something that somebody has to have, they accept the price increase. If it's a, it's a luxury item or not a must have, then it's something that a business owner has to be more careful about raising the price. Okay, that's fair. Well then, Doug, we, um, we talked about characteristics of business owners that are making it through this time in a couple uh, in our past couple of shows we, we had this uh, discussion so right now this is a characteristic moment of a business owner in a moment you know it's almost because one thing that you said that there's always going to be some kind of crisis at hand in your business development right and this is this is a primary uh, example of that, that crisis what characteristic should a business owner uh be exuding right now that will help you move through this? What do you feel like? Once again, and I, I turn back to some of the fundamentals that we always talk about. Communication is really one of the keys of getting through any particular crisis. And that is understanding your, your customer, understanding your suppliers, understanding everything in your business, but particularly with customers, communicating with them, or at least understanding where they are in terms of who they are, what they buy, what their patterns are, 
what their habits are and addressing that. Some are easier to make changes to than others. Some are not able to absorb changes. If you serve, say, a retirement community, they're going to have a much tougher time dealing with inflation than other sectors of the economy. That's right. And these these yeah. are the kind of things that you need to know. You can touch bases with them. There's people you can talk to. I talk to my customers all the time, my clients all the time, to get a read on where they are with their businesses and where they are with me as far as the services that I provide. I always want to try and provide more value. One of the things I've done as we've increased our prices is I've also increased our value. I've increased the services mm-hmm. that we offer. You get it. You, you're paying a little bit more, but I'm adding some more things to what you get so that it helps to offset and creates a global picture where the value is still very good. That's it. I love it. Um, and that's that opportunity. One thing I, I love about you, one thing that if you want to know Doug for who he is, he's all about opportunity. And um, that is how it looks, you know, in real time. Um, in one, one of our conversations, we're going to end off with this, but customer service is a big deal at this stage. Would you would you agree with that? Absolutely. The, the nice thing about customer service is it does, it's not subject to inflation. Yes, you could have a, a call-in center and all these other things, but I'm talking about the basic, the way you handle your customers, that hasn't gone up in price. That, that generally <laughs> stays where it is. Um, you can always give advice. You can always offer uh, your customer direction, things that, that they need. That's something that good service never goes out of style and it, it, it's always valued by your customers. That's it. I love it. Is there any is, is there any final thoughts that you'd like to give everybody? The final thought that I always like to leave people off on is the sun is always rising somewhere. It's the motto yes. of our firm. <laughs> but remember that because it's important because no matter where you are in your business cycle, no matter what you're doing in your business, there is always opportunity out there. You need to look for it, find it, realize it. But with everything, there's a sun is setting on something and it is rising on something else. I love it. You guys heard it here. And I, I'm going to chime in on that customer service. That is opportunity right now. When in doubt, dig, dig back into your customer service and get back to the fundamentals of your business. So as a new business owner, don't panic. As a seasoned business owner, don't panic. Get into the fundamentals and stay stay steady. So I would like to add that to the opportunity right now as far as uh, for us to stay, stay, stay steady. Don't panic. As Doug alluded to. The sun is always rising somewhere. Is that right? That's right. Always, there's right. always an opportunity. <laughs> well, folks, uh, that's enough for this episode. We will actually uh, continue this conversation around inflation because obviously it's here for a little bit, but we're going to um, have some other conversations here next month. So I appreciate you guys joining us. Those are on uh, podcasts, on LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Thank you guys for joining us. But Doug and I, we actually have to get back to work. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.